Welcome to Spring Training 2006 in Jupiter, Florida. We're at the spring training site of the St. Louis Cardinals Roger Dean Stadium. This will be a familiar theme. It's sold out today. It's going to be sold out a lot this season. Two familiar faces return, and that's Tony La Russa and Dave Duncan. And while there are question marks heading into the season, the biggest at third base, Scott Rowland. He's in the lineup today. Cardinals baseball coming up on FSN. The St. Louis Cardinals are entering their 115th season of play in the National League. They're in the midst of their ninth spring training in Jupiter, Florida. We're at Roger Dean Stadium where the Cardinals will play host to the Atlanta Braves. It's spring training 2006. And so far, Chris Carpenter has picked up right where he left off. Outstanding so far in spring. The reigning Cy Young Award winner. The biggest question along with Scott Rowland, who will be that fifth starter coming out of the rotation? More answers will come today. And can David Eckstein pick up where he left off an outstanding season from a year ago. With my partner, Albert Bosky, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Great to have you with us on your home of the Cardinals all season long, FSN. It's been back-to-back 100-win -back seasons plus for the St. Louis Cardinals. Now, a lot of people believe that this team is as good, if not better, than what we saw a year ago. Well, I'll make a prediction right now, and I'll say that this pitching staff, and in particular the starting rotation, is better than it's been the last couple years, and you win with pitching. All right, here's the question that a lot of people are wanting to know. Number one, can Scott Rowland bounce back? We're starting to get indications that he can. The other, the fifth starter. We're going to know more today with Sidney Ponson. Well, great competition. To me, it's got to go to the veteran, and that is Ponson. Anthony Reyes has been working with a sinker. He struggled down here. It wouldn't hurt him to go and start in Memphis. Adam Wainwright, who many people didn't realize was very much part of the equation, has pitched very, very well. But I think you've got to give it to the veteran, Ponson. He knows how to pitch. He's getting rid of his personal problems, great work ethic, and they like the way he pitches. That's a look at your Ford Key matchup. It's back-to-back -back games starting today against the Atlanta Braves. We're at Roger Dean Stadium. Cardinals baseball with our first pitch and starting lineups comes your way next. Welcome back to Jupiter, Florida. Roger Dean Stadium, one out away here in the first as Sidney Ponson delivers to an old buddy, Edgar Renteria, back in the National League. The shortstop for the Atlanta Braves. Ponson fell behind on Brian Jordan, 2-0, the leadoff man for the Braves. And our first batter of this ballgame, and he grounded out to short to David Eckstein. And it's quickly no balls and two strikes on Renteria. We get a look today, Al, at Sidney Ponson years ago he won 17 games in both the National League and American League combined and you know it's well documented some of his off the field problems that led to his release from a about a seven and a half million dollar contract from Baltimore and he wanted to come here to resurrect his career and he's doing so one two pitch to Edgar is chopped left side to Scott Rowland bare hands and a foul ball but a nifty play though by Scott Rowland if you're a young third baseman, you go ahead and execute the defensive play. Don't wait and turn around and see what the umpire calls. And I give you an idea about Scott Rowland, who's feeling pretty good. He knows he's not going to be 100%. There's times that shoulder's going to be a little bit achy. But talking with him today, he said he has not lost any strength. You know, he'll play a game. They'll test the arm. They'll you know, kind of put pressure on it, see if it maintains its strength, and he can hold it, push the trainers back with it and he's very happy with the progress so far another one two pitch to Renteria swing and a miss and a strikeout for Sidney Ponson and Ponson in his last two starts has been much better than what we saw early in spring let's take a look at that Braves lineup we've already seen Jordan and Renteria Chipper Jones is back and he'll dig in the third baseman today for Bobby Cox's club then Andrew Jones back from the WBC Adam LaRoche, Jeff Rancor, Pete Orr, Todd Pratt, and Tim Hudson. Chipper Jones, the switch hitting third baseman, moved back to third base last year. And he was saying before the game he was uh, much more comfortable over third rather than playing in the outfield. Part of Team USA in the World Baseball Classic. Advanced Auto Parts. Brings us our numbers on Sidney Ponson. A look at his career over 200 starts. A record that is below 500. But as you mentioned a couple of years ago, Al really put it together, signed that big, big free agent deal, and uh, it all kind of started falling apart both on the field and off the field. Right. There's no doubt if you talk to any American League manager or people that have seen him, they say he 
has the ability to get a lot of ground balls. He knows how to pitch. He hasn't been on some of the best teams, and he had some problems off the field, but Cardinals felt he's a, a good enough person that they want to give him this chance. Defense for the Cardinals. Another look at Scott Rowland over at third. Brought to you again by our friends at Auto Tires. Schumacher, Edmonds, and Rodriguez in the outfield. Roland Eckstein on the left side of the infield, along with Miles and Duncan, who's had a fabulous spring at first. Yadier Molina behind the plate. Back from the World Baseball Classic as well. Two out walk to Chipper Jones, and here's Andrew Jones coming off just a monster season a year ago, a year in which he led the league in home runs and RBIs. 51 dingers a season ago and 128 RBIs. And he finished in the top three in the MVP voting. Of course, that win to Albert Pujols. And Jones hits this one out to right. Rodriguez will back up a couple of steps in a windy day here in Jupiter. And the Braves strand a man in their half of the first. The Cardinals coming up. And there's no score on FSN. Look at Tony La Russa, his club back-to-back 100-win -back campaigns. David Eckstein will lead it off for the Redbirds. Switch hitting Aaron Miles trying to make this club. Will bat second. Scott Rowland third. Edmonds fourth, the cleanup man. Then John Rodriguez, Chris Duncan, who has four homers this spring and nine RBIs. Yadier Molina, Skip Schumacher and Sidney Ponson batting ninth. Our advanced auto parts starter, Tim Hudson, in his second year in the National League, Al. And you see that great winning percentage, 106 and 48. He was a 14 and 9 winner last year, his first year with the Braves. He is their number one starter and will get their opening day assignment. Here's David Eckstein hitting 207 this spring, no homers, three RBIs. He has drawn three walks. You just don't worry about David. You just know he's going to be ready on opening day. Got married in the offseason. Has had a little bout with a flu, but feeling good. And, you know, he's just a, a winning type ball player. We're working on our jugs gun, which will give you the read of how fast these pitchers are throwing. As Eckstein takes strike two, it's one and two. Hit 294 last year, a career best for David. The one-two pitch by Hudson in the dirt, two and two. Amazingly, David Eckstein was just the Redbirds' fourth opening day shortstop in the last 24 years. That has been a solid position for the Cardinals, to say the least. When you think about Ozzie Smith and Renteria, and now David Eckstein. And then you turn around, what's this going to be about the fifth, second baseman in five years? That's right. Stein is hit by the pitch. We saw that a bunch of year ago as that got away from Hudson. And the Cardinals leadoff man is on. Defensively, a look at Brian Jordan, who was with the Cardinals all the way back up in 1991. The defense brought to you by Auto Tire. Jordan's in left, Andrew Jones in center, Frank Cor with that great arm is in right. Chipper Jones at third, Rentery at short, Pete Orr, part of Team Canada who upset Team USA is at second base, Adam LaRoche at first, and Todd Pratt is behind the plate. Long time backup in the National League. And that ball gets away, as that may have been a foul tip by Miles. They're going to say no, it didn't catch the bat, it's a wild pitch. So Hudson has hit a man, and now a wild pitch, and X9 advances to second. Uncharacteristic for Hudson. It sure is. Aaron Miles. Boy, his first game, he goes five for six, but he, in that game, he sprained his wrist. He's still, he's a switch hitter, but he, he cannot hit from the right side right now, and he missed about two weeks. But because Junior Spivey or no one else has established the second base job, they're going to give a good long look to Aaron Miles. He's a 29-year-old that made 69 starts at second base last year for Colorado. Gets down the bunt perfectly to Chipper Jones. He'll take it. Gets Miles by a step. A sacrifice, and X9 advances to third. Yesterday's ball game, when the Cardinals and Chris Carpenter shut out Baltimore, seven nothing. Fundamentally, it was the best game of the season they have played. Many times, they gave themselves up. They did the little things to get men in scoring position, and then they had key at bats. But just about every at bat was a good quality of bat from the Cardinal hitters. Scott Rowland is five for 18 this spring, 278 average. And just great to see him back in the lineup. And normally, when healthy in previous spring trainings, he's a guy, Al, that would walk away from spring training, 
hits about 200, but it means nothing to him. He would take pitch after pitch after pitch, even if they were right down the middle, just trying to get his timing down. And he said, I hope people don't look at my spring training average and get concerned. Well, he's hitting 278. Hasn't really driven the ball all that well, but he does feel close to 100%. And it's a natural progression after the surgery and the extensive that you'd have some adhesions there. You've got to break loose, and you know, it's going to take time. And hopefully, you, by midpoint, you'll feel pretty good. 2-0 pitch is hit to third. Eckstein will score. It's an RBI for Scott Rowland, and the Cardinals lead it one to nothing. So a hit by pitch, and the sacrifice by Miles and Rowland. Grounds out for the RBI. There's two down for Edmonds. Team concept. You just go out there. You put the ball in play. Eckstein running on contact. Scores the first run on a ground ball out. But there's a lot of enthusiasm in this clubhouse. And these guys that uh, are joining for the first time or the nucleus who's been around are really anxious to get this thing going and see this team play. Two outs. Nobody on. And here's Jim Edmonds batting cleanup. Right back to Hudson. Good play. And a throw over to LaRoche. High throw taken by the first baseman. Hudson gives up a run. Cardinals lead it after one inning of play. Cindy Ponson back to work for the Cardinals with a lead of one to nothing. As we move to the second here in Jupiter. Adam LaRoche, first baseman, will lead it off for the Atlanta Braves, followed by Jeff Rancourt and Pete Orr. Ponson walked a man in the first, left him stranded. That's a line out right to Chris Duncan. Couple of steps to his right, one pitch, one out. Cardinal Baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. Refreshingly smooth Bud Light, always worth it. By Auto Tire, for the lowest bottom line price and the best warranty, you ought to go to Auto Tire. And by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. Now Brabowski alongside, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Roger Dean Stadium, and our Bud Sports crew is here. And here's Jeff Rancourt, who almost won the Rookie of the Year. Eventually went to Ryan Howard as that one is pulled down the left field line and foul. Francourt was called up about midway through the season. And, I mean, he burst on the scene, Al. He was a cover of the Sports Illustrated at one point. 14 home runs, 45 RBIs. A free swinger and a guy that's got tremendous power. Well, and yesterday, his first game back from Team USA, he put on a little bit of a show, going three for three, a home run and five RBIs. Very talented youngster right in the backyard of the Atlanta Braves, one of their suburbs. And to me, the most amazing thing about the Atlanta Braves is they'll go for their 15th straight NL East title this year. They used 18 different rookies last year, 18. And then on their postseason roster, they had eight rookies. And there's no reason not to think that that uh, trend won't continue. I mean, some people think, yeah, the Mets improved, but Philly may not have enough pitching, particularly in that ballpark. Nationals look like they've taken steps backwards. Here's a 3-1 pitch to Fran Coeur, taken for a strike on the outside corner. Full count as he had flipped the bat. He was headed to first. A late call by our home plate umpire, Angel Hernandez, one of your favorites, Al. Well, take a look at it. You want to pitch down in the strike zone? Nobody from Atlanta should ever argue about that pitch after the, <laughs> the way they've gotten all those corners for the years with Maddox and Glavin. You know, it's very interesting because Leo Mazzoni left the Atlanta Braves as their pitching coach, and Bobby Cox has hired Roger McDowell to be the pitching coach during Leo's time. That looked like a better pitch than Wayne called earlier. Sure I think did. they had 12 ERA titles. And yet many people believe the real pitching coach of the Atlanta Braves was John Smoltz. And Roger McDowell was plucked from the uh, Dodgers farm system. Leo Mazzoni was making out $250,000. And his buddy, longtime friend, Sam Berlazzo, the manager with Baltimore, was able to get Leo and also get him a three-year deal with... 1.5 million. So he left for not only his longtime friend, but the money as well. And I don't know about you, but uh, you know Roger McDowell a little bit. He's probably the last guy you would think to fit in as a pitching coach, watching him and the way that he acted during his playing days. Right. I mean, he was, Roger was one of the biggest uh, clowns or, you know, characters right there and a lot of pranksters. But 
They, he has already impressed them with how extensive, how hard he works. Came out of the Dodgers minor league system. Swing and a miss, a throw down to second in time, and they got him. Yadier Molina showing off the arm. And Fran Cor is gunned down. Now Yadi, we all know about his catch and throw, one of the best, if not the best young catcher, and soon to be the best catcher in baseball. But he is going to hit this year. His hitting went developed quite a bit during last season, and he'll start to go even further. Good pitch by Sidney Ponson and a swing and a miss by Pete Orr. And there's Lou Brock had a chance to visit with Lou before the game, and he loves coming down to Jupiter. Hall of Famers, Lou Brock, Bob Gibson here, Dennis Eckersley, we saw him earlier, oh. Louie McGee, and Larry Walker, some of Tony's guest coaches. Now we're talking about Molina, only 31 runners attempted to steal against him last year, only 14 made it. A lot of people believe he's gonna be a multiple winner of that gold glove. And he just absolutely shut down the running game. I think the nearest competitor was more than twice as many attempts. He also got married in the offseason. So that smile is even bigger now. Two balls and two strikes on Pete Orr. Fights it off and hit into left center field. It is a windy day and you can see there by Edmonds making the basket catch. The eight time gold glover out there in center. Frank Cor gunned down at second base by Molina. Midway through the second. Well, the cards are in your hands, so use your singular phone to text your answer to today's question. And the question, who should be the Cardinals' fifth starter for this year? Text your vote, either A, B, or C, to 42957. Stay tuned for results later in the game. We'll get those to you. We're going to find out more about that fifth starter today as John Rodriguez swings through the first pitch from Tim Hudson it's Rodriguez Chris Duncan and Yadier Molina the Cardinals half of the second Redbirds lead it one to nothing on a Scott Rowland RBI John Rodriguez was a guy that probably we could ask this question who should be your starter in left and a lot of people around St. Louis and that uh, follow the Cardinals wanted to see Rodriguez step up and take that job as he's hitting barely over 220 and he hits this back to Hudson he'll be retired John Rodriguez has been battling a sore shoulder after having a terrific winter ball season. He was one of the uh, top players in winter ball. Yeah, he didn't qualify for the batting title. He didn't have enough at bats, but he has uh, rotator cuff tendonitis. Kept him out for a while, but they are really working him over with the off-speed stuff, and he has not made the adjustment. And that is an open question for left field. Chris Duncan pounds one foul. This guy has had a fabulous spring. Four home runs, nine RBIs, hitting 321. And he's doing it with the pressure of having his dad on the coaching staff for Tony La Russa. And that cannot be an easy situation. Well, his dad has loved this opportunity to watch his son play on an everyday basis. He will not make the team, and for a very good reason. And Tony has already come out and said that. Yeah, and it's and it's a reason is because he's 24 years of age. He led in home runs and RBIs at AAA last year. He has to find a defense position. A guy named Pujols is going to be there for a while. Yeah, and more importantly, though, he needs 500, 550 at-bats this year. And if I were the Cardinals, I would send him down when Pujols, and, and Pujols probably flying back in today. But I would send him down, and I'd make him play left field every day and see if he can win that job. And like you're saying, it's obvious. I mean, Albert Pujols is not going to leave for a number of years there, so that spot is occupied. It would be interesting if the Cardinals would approach Pujols and say, how would you feel about going back to left field to make a spot for Chris Duncan if it, if it ever got to that point? As Duncan swings and misses and strikes out. Well, you know, you, it sounds interesting, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I mean, I Albert, Albert you, would have to come up to me and suggest that. Right. Uh, but the Cardinals feel that he's going to be an impact-type player. And, of course, he also could be a very tr valuable trade bait down the road if, if he's really, he ultimately decides he's only a DH. Here's Molina. He talked about the problems he had at the plate last year. It was in the beginning of the season. He just looked overmatched last April. 
Started out one for 32, and it was Albert Pujols, speaking of Albert, that uh, said to him, get out of that exaggerated crouch that you're in. You may want to open up your stance a little bit, and it really helped him out. And he wound up having a pretty decent year if you take away that first month of the season. Take that away, and then he's... You know, he was another victim. Uh, you know, we, everybody talks about the successes of the World Baseball Classic. But, he, you know, he got four or five at-bats. He was three for five, according to the stats. He told me he's three for four. Uh, he's hit well here. He's five for ten with a home run. But, you know, he probably would have got 25 at-bats if he would have stayed here. Hudson has walked a man. That's Molina. And hit a man. That was Eckstein to start the ball game. For the Cardinals offensively. And it brings in Skip Schumacher. Because no one has really claimed that left field spot. And probably the number one person right now would be Taguchi. That's Schumacher's getting a more extensive playing time. He's an outstanding defensive player. He's like a slap hitter, but... He can run, but he doesn't know how to steal. He's had 37 at-bats already this year as Renteria will flip to second. The Cardinals are done in their half of the second. An RBI by Roland. That's the only scoring so far this afternoon. Redbirds up one to nothing. Third inning here in Jupiter, Florida. Dan McLaughlin, Al Roboski with you. The Prime C Club, Al, is probably the best way for fans now to get their tickets. It is almost entirely sold out for the season, but the Prime C Club, which is at stlcardinals.com, our tickets posted by season ticket holders that can't use them for particular games. And right now, there's about 100-plus offers on there for some seats. If you uh, have any inkling of heading down to the ballpark this summer, that is the way to go. The Prime Seat Club. Also, there are party rooms available and uh, picnic areas available, which includes beverages and food. But the Prime Seat Club, and I was just uh, on the phone with Joe Strome prior to the game, one of the heads of the ticket office for the St. Louis Cardinals, and he was saying that is the way to go. If you want to get your seats and come on down and see some Redbird baseball this year. Not only is it the way to go, it's, you know, as you say, it's available 24 hours. You can do it at stlcardinals.com. But these are season ticket holders that give tickets back to the Cardinals to, for resale. So they're outstanding seats. Just Todd Pratt, he fouls that one off his foot. And there's two strikes, one and two the count. He'll be followed by Tim Hudson in the uh, top of the order for Atlanta. How about this? Tickets remaining for the 2006 season. Seats will be available. Food and beverage includes only 30 games. Now that's where you go to the Bank of America Club with the scoreboard patio, and rooftop uh, deck, individual party rooms. There's only 16,000 of those seats, and most of them are either two. Uh, single game tickets or anything. They're, there's only standing room of tickets available only only standing room only for 69 games. And a check swing by Pratt fouled away. In party rooms, there's 29 games where party rooms are available, and those dates are mostly in the second half. Already sold out 12 games. There's standing room only for 40 other games. Two balls, two strikes on Pratt, who Arrived in the big leagues all the way back in 1992 with the Philadelphia Phillies. And the uh, majority of his career has been spent in the National League East with the Phillies, the Mets, and now the Atlanta Braves. And the Braves again trying to go for their 15th straight National League East title. Simply amazing. Rounder to Eckstein. at short. Over to Chris Duncan. One away. Tim Fielders should be very busy this season. The Cardinals, uh, Anson gets a lot of ground balls. Carpenter was just brilliant yesterday. And as I said, overall, that was the best game the Cardinals have played all season. Mulder's throwing the ball extremely well. Supon, I thought, really pitched extremely well the other night, the other day, too. He hit all the spots. Now you think about this team from uh, 2004 when they went to the World Series only 10 players remained from that roster that uh, lost to the Boston Red Sox and really it's a team that's in transition from going from that murderer's row that they had with Reggie Sanders and Walker and a healthy Roland Edmonds Pujols to now being defined by the best pitching probably in the National League at least you can make a case for it. When, when spring training opened up the pitchers got hammered just about every game. And we're getting the ball up out over the plate. Since that time, their ERA is third in the National League, or overall. 
X9 can take his time with Hudson running. And there's two down. This date in baseball history brought to you by Schnooks. Ken the Hawk Harrelson fractures his leg and will miss most of the season for the Cleveland Indians back in 1970. That's, uh, well, that was one of my three choices. I won't give you the other two, but yeah, I was on that one. I understood where we were going with that because Doug Stanton is back with us. And Doug, a huge White Sox fan, now he can rest in peace after last year. And if we don't have much going on in the way of trivia, you can just bank it as on the uh, Chicago White Sox, going on something with them. Or you can just make up something. We've seen that too. Yeah. Numerous times. But it's very creative when he comes up. Mr. Met was his finest work last year. <laughs> Brian Jordan rips it up the uh, middle for a base hit, a two-out hit. And the first hit in this ballgame. Brian Jordan trying to make the club for the Atlanta Braves. And the Braves lost Julio Franco last year, who, by the way, I will be 49 when his contract expires with the Mets. He got a two-year deal with New York, so Brian Jordan actually is trying to play a little of a first base because Adam LaRoche struggles a little bit against lefties, so Jordan could play against those lefties and play first base. Well, Brian's had physical problems the last couple of years, particularly the knees, and he's in great shape. And here's Edgar Renteria. And this is, it could turn out to be just a wonderful deal for the Atlanta Braves. Braves are only on the hook for six of the 10 million owed to Edgar in each of the next uh, three years. Real sensitive guy that we saw for six years in St. Louis, and you had to wonder if Boston was the right fit for him. His replacement retires him. That's X time. He was busy this inning. Brian Jordan, the former Cardinal, picks up the first hit in this game as the Braves trail by the score of one to nothing. St. Louis will have Ponson in the top of the order coming up. Sidney Ponson, he wears that unlucky number 13, but he's trying to change his luck here in 2006 with the Cardinals. On the first pitch, he lines it out to right center field. That's going to drop for a base hit, and the leadoff man is on. The Cardinals' first hit of the afternoon, Sidney Ponson. This portion of Cardinal Baseball on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Kia Motors. Kia, the power to surprise. And by Sony PlayStation, MLB 06, the show, in stores now. Sold out Jupiter, Roger Dean Stadium. As Sidney Ponson picks up the Cardinals' first hit, and it's David Eckstein who was hit by a pitch his first time up digging in. Sidney changing his luck, growing hair. Last time we saw him, he had the shave look going on. Now you should call him Sir Sidney, too. Yes, sir. excuse me, you're correct. Sir Sidney Ponson. Knighted from Aruba, but uh, right. was it the Dutch government or something? Correct. You're all over it. Right. I remember he pitched a pretty a brilliant game against the Cardinals. It was a turn years. back the uh, clock day right. with the Browns and the Cardinals back in 2003. And he was with uh, Baltimore at that time and pitched a complete game against St. Louis. Runner is going. David Eckstein executes perfectly with the hit and run. Frank Hoare almost gunned down Tonson, and Eckstein heads up play, winds up at second base. That's David Eckstein. I sure mean, is. Just a little hit and run. Sidney kind of had to jump over it, and he doesn't know the right field arm of Frank Coor. <laughs> and Okindo is trying to tell him, first of all, don't let the ball hit you. Doesn't do that. Now he's kind of going there. Oh, I can make it over here. And why is Okindo telling me to hurry up? <laughs> Look at David Eckstein. That's a hustling, winning ball player. He takes advantage of that throw and scoots into scoring position. Still might be uh, faster than Molina. As Ponson winds up at third. And now it's Aaron Miles who sacrificed his first time up. Takes a strike. Aaron Miles considered a tough guy at second base. So a story written by Derek Gould of the Post-Dispatch. Well written. Talking about Aaron Miles being held up at gunpoint spring training a couple of seasons ago and battling through that to get the attacker that uh, was holding up he along with a couple of teammates. And he said, that's uh, all you need to know about me. He said, that I'm going to fight and scratch and claw. And he did that to get to the major leagues. He's 29 years of age. Sure, a little biting, too. A little biting. Mike Tyson. 
He said you can uh, survive that, you can survive anything. Runners at second and third, nobody out, 1-1 one, one pitch. As you mentioned before, Al, he's a switch hitter, but yet this is the only side of the plate that he can hit from because of the bone bruise on his hand. Yeah, it's a back of the wrist and kind of stretch the tendons a little bit and kind of sore, but this is an opportunity right here that you know, he dreams about to show the Cardinals that not only he can play defense, but he can hit in the clutch. And you don't always have to get a base hit to score a run. A ball and two strikes. Two and two. One of the knocks on Miles is that he will not walk. And they'd like to hire base percentage. He's not going to hit for a lot of power or anything like that. He doesn't strike out, but sometimes you will accept a few more strikeouts to get the on-base percentage higher. And as you mentioned before as well, he got off to a great start, but uh, because of that bone bruise, missed quality at bats. And he strikes out here. So Hudson goes low and in to get Miles, and it brings in Scott Rowland, who has the lone RBI this afternoon. Hudson is an upper echelon pitcher. He knows how to deal. And he's got that nasty splitter. Still at this point, Al, there's not a clear-cut favorite for that second base spot. Not at all. Just a couple of weeks to go. Roland grounded out to third, but picked up an RBI his first time. You can add possibly two more to that. Ponson in. Here comes Eckstein, and it's three to nothing St. Louis on the base hit up the middle by Scott Roland. All three RBIs are off the bat of Scott Roland. So Ponson helps himself, and I think big difference in that winning percentage for Ponson when he starts seeing the execution of Cardinal hitters in the clutch. Edmonds trying to tell Eckstein he didn't need to slide. But nice job, Scotty Rowland. One out brings in Edmonds, who grounded sharply back to the pitcher his first time up, Tim Hudson. Way out in front of that pitch is Edmonds has talked about well, getting away from what he was a year ago. More of a pole hitter last season. He wants to get back to where he was driving it to all fields. Still wound up with 29 homers, but by his standards, a down year as he hit under 270. Well, you remember how we always talk about how great power to the opposite field. He grounds this one, two second chance at a double play. On two first, and there it is, a double play. 4-6-3. It's Scott Rowland picks up RBIs two and three in this game. Three total. All off his bat. Three zips, St. Louis. Willie McGee in camp with the Cardinals. He says, Al, I'm going to give it a couple more years. My babies are going to grow up, and then I'd like to latch on with a major league team again and be a coach. He still looks like he could play. Oh, yeah, and somebody's going to be lucky enough to get that uh, wealth of knowledge and just a great personality. Here's Chipper Jones. Chipper first time up. He walked 331 career home runs for the switch hitting Chipper Jones. First overall pick back in 1990. Atlanta had nine players playing in the World Baseball Classic. They just have one Sosa for the Dominican team. Wow. And that's why Bobby Cox was saying that from here on out, these are going to be more like everyday games, regular season games. Well, they had a game even in their home ballpark where they had not one position player was a regular. Ground ball to Miles to his left. Chipper Jones retired. I don't know if there's a better GM manager tandem than Bobby Cox and John Schultz. They have done wonders with that roster, turning it over year after year and getting into postseason play. Well, and I mean, every year, it seems like they have, what the Cardinals have this year, about 12 turnovers. And yet they find a way. They find a way, but they always had the nucleus of pitching. Andrew Jones jumps into this pitch out to left center field. Way back in, that ball is off the wall. Edmonds off to get it. And Jones will trot into second base with a one-out double. 
Now, the amazing thing about Jones, he's only 28, but entering his 10th year in the major leagues. It's hard to believe. 51 home runs a year ago, and with the wind blowing in, that's the difference in that swing. As this ball, he launches. He had 51 home runs, 128 RBIs a year ago, but the average was down to just 263. And a terrific defensive player as well. Ian. Jim Edmonds are the, the benchmarks when you talk about gold glove center fielders. Edmonds with eight, a 990 fielding percentage in his career as this one is hit again two miles and LaRoche is retired. Two down. Jones moves up to third base and it's up to Jeff Rancourt. He walked and then was caught stealing by Molina. You see Sir Sidney getting a lot of ground balls and he moves the ball in and out, keeps the ball down the majority of the time. Cardinal pitchers have allowed the fewest home runs in the National League, just eight, and the last one was a week ago Tuesday. Strike one on Frank Core. Just another one of the uh, homegrown talent for the Atlanta Braves. He was a football player and a quarterback, and he said, if anybody wants to draft me, I will not sign unless it's the Atlanta Braves. He did, and they're thankful. Low throw, and Duncan can't pick it. And the Braves get on the board. It's 3-1. Be an error on Eckstein. And it is. The Ponson did his job. But low throw. Duncan can't scoop it out of the dirt. I think he, Eckstein had a lot more time. You see the big hop, and it'll sink her right in the dirt. Short hop for Roots, Duncan, and they get on the scoreboard. Or dig in, digs in, and uh, time is called by Molina. Pete Orr played with Team Canada at the World Baseball Classic. I became a fan of that uh, as it went on. I, I thought it was fun to watch the teams get as excited as they were, the fans across the world. Well, you, you know what? We didn't really get a flavor for it here. Well, the problem was, and... Uh, I was with Tony La Russa last night, and he was very, very upset with many things. But that was a lot like the Caribbean World Series. But, it, you know, he was very critical and felt that some of the hierarchy of baseball just thought, well, the Americans just throw a team out. American players were not ready to compete. And, you know, there was a lot of bad things. There was a lot of teams that were hurt much more than, say, the Cardinals. The Cardinals were relatively safe. Grounder to Duncan. Fair ball. He'll step on the bag and Orr is retired. And he's 0 for 2. Rodriguez, Duncan, and Molina coming up for the Redbirds. The West is re-airing several of the best and most memorable games from last season. It's our Cardinals countdown to 06 and the final four of our countdown kicks off this Saturday. Albert Pujols in a 13th inning home run. A two-run shot against the Astros to beat the Strohs. Cardinals countdown. 206 Saturday at 7 on FSN Midwest. John Rodriguez, soft speed delivery, outside for ball one. Rounded back to the pitcher his first time up. Scott Rowland with three RBIs so far. The Cardinals lead it 3 1 against Tim Hudson. That was the game that uh, also, if memory serves me correct, that uh, there was a collision out in left field. Reggie Sanders got hurt on that collision with Edmonds. And it was the first game back from the uh, All-Star break against Houston. And that wound up being a, a huge series down the stretch for the Cardinals because Houston would get red hot again and the Cardinals would beat Pettit, Clemens, and Oswalt in that series. Just remember we said our goals for the second half were don't get anybody hurt. That's right. The first or second play. It was in the second inning, I think. <laughs> These pitchers, they recognized last year when Rodriguez came up hot, gave the cards a shot in the arm. But he was a dead red hitter, fastball hitter, and now they try to work him over with everything up soft. 56 games for the Cardinals last year, five homers, 24 RBIs. Chops this one foul. Full count on John Rodriguez. Roger Dean Stadium, 77 degrees, our game time temperature. We understand it's uh, in the low 40s back home in St. Louis. Overcast skies here in Florida. 
Here's a 3-2 pitch by Hudson. Rodriguez hits it the other way. Langerhans on the move as he replaces uh, Brian Jordan left. And he makes the catch for the first out. And it brings in Chris Duncan. And he has benefited, to say the least, from the World Baseball Classic with Albert Pujols gone and missing from camp. It's been Duncan that's been playing over at first base and seeing the majority of the uh, plate appearances from that spot. Brian Dombach's got a lot of playing time. Spezio. To me, Spezio's made the team because of his versatility. Switch, switch hitter. hitter. Yeah. Can play first and third, a little second, maybe some outfield. I kind of look at his role as almost like a John Mabry. Yep. And and plus, because of being a switch hitter, and he's in great shape. Dabak could be very tough to make this team, but he's opened the eyes of, of the scouts watching the games. A ball and two strikes. Door back on the grass. Duncan gets a piece and a foul ball. One and two. Spezio, of course, uh, the son of Ed Spezio played for the Cardinals. In the 60s and kind of a novelty he has his dad's number, 26. And his dad opened up Bush Stadium 2 and Scott hope he's opened up Bush Stadium 3. Here's a 1-2 pitch. Scott Spezio that had a great postseason with Anaheim. As you get a look at one of the new Cardinals as well, that's Gary Bennett talking with Scott Rowland, but uh, Spezio was on that championship team along with David Eckstein. If you remember, it was game six and late in that ball game, Anaheim facing elimination, down five to nothing, and it was Spezio that knocked in two runs that got the Angels back in the game that they eventually won and then took the series in seven. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Took some off it, and Duncan strikes out. Third strikeout of the afternoon for Hudson. And talking with David Eckstein, he said Scott Spezio has got that free spirit, but don't mistake him for a guy that doesn't care. He said he's one of the hardest competitors that uh, they had on that team. Compete, compete, compete. Two outs, and here's Molina with nobody on. You know Molina's going to do the bulk of the catching, but uh, you saw briefly Bennett in the dugout. Looks like an outstanding backup type. Two balls and no strikes on Molina, who walked his first time up. Martin was also intrigued by another catcher they have in camp, Michael Hernandez. Three balls and no strikes. The Cardinals would like to extend Sidney uh, Ponson a little bit longer in this game. He's gone back-to-back -back games with four innings. There's a strike on Molina. Is it safe to say he's going to be your fifth starter, you think, Al? At least at this point. Yes, I, I think it is. A lot to Molina. There's some talk that maybe one of the one of the three that does, does not make the fifth starter would be a long man in the bullpen. But, I mean, there's all of a sudden some new competition in that bullpen. Josh Hancock, who was released by Cincinnati, who may make this ball club. Would that be a slap in the face to Cincinnati? Because they were, they were pitching four. That's hit out to left center field. Molina's going to have to move to score. He's going to be waved in by Jose Okendo. The relay to the plate. Not in time. A two-out double and an RBI for Skip Schumacher, and it's 4-1 Cardinals. Skip, a lot of playing time, and as I said, he's an excellent defensive guy, but kind of a slap hitter. Al McRae likes, feels that he could be a, a, a real good role player on a very good ball club. But when you can score Molina <laughs> from first base, you've done something. 
He runs hard, just doesn't go anyplace. Ponson is one for one on the afternoon with a run scored. Another name that's kind of emerged out of that bullpen is a guy that we've seen time and again, Alan Bennis. Absolutely. Alan pitching free and just a class act that he is was given one more opportunity and he's pitched well down here. But you know, with all of his track record, I've got to see him stay healthy. Little chopper hit to short. Pena backs up. Loves and throws, and Ponson is retired. Cardinals strand a man. But they pick up a two-out double RBI by Skip Schumacher to score Yadier Molina from first base. Cardinals lead it as we head to the fifth. It's 4-1. Spring training baseball back on FSN, your home of the Cardinals. 113 telecasts this season. We're at Roger Dean Stadium. Glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon. Al Roboski, Dan McLaughlin with you and our Bud Sports crew, and there's the aforementioned Alan Bennis. And it's 4-1 Redbirds as we move to the fifth. This bullpen is uh, a bright spot, according to Tony La Russa. They've led the National League in ERA the last two seasons. You figure from the left side, Al, Ricardo Rincon, who is signed as a free agent. Randy Flores. And then a battle by Tyler Johnson and Carmen Kelly for that third left-hander spot. They're going to go with 12 pitchers, so that means seven relievers and I think they really want to take a trio of left handers really right now I think they and Callie the other day atoned for some earlier problems and he had a tough outing and, uh, and he passed with flying colors as he came into a ball game with nobody out and runners the second and third in the tie game first guy tapped back to the mound got it got them out at uh, at home plate and then got a double play ball. Nothing in two the count on Todd Pratt. Sidney Ponson has allowed just two hits. And he can make it three with that base hit into right. Todd Pratt, you know, the, the veteran backup catcher. And that's what he's going to be here. But uh, he's a good man to have on a, on a young pitching staff and help tutor their catching. But they've got some great young catching talent. Ricardo Rincon was a, a late show for spring training because of visa problems. He signed a two-year deal in the offseason with the Cardinals. Randy Flores was fantastic last year, so he's back. And like you said, you've got Johnson and Callie as Tim Hudson takes the ball outside. Right side is Ringhausen. Braden Looper, who could pitch today. Brad Thompson is there. Jeff Nelson, longtime veteran. Alan Bennis that we mentioned. Maybe a converted starter goes down there. I'm telling you, Josh Hancock has opened some eyes. Hudson gets the sacrifice down, and Pratt moves up to second base. And again, it's a, a source of strength, according to Tony La Russa, his bullpen. And I'll tell you, yesterday in that game, had a young guy that was a six-year minor league free agent to pitch last year at uh, Memphis, Falkenborg. I mean, it's the first time I saw this kid. He's about 6'5", tall and skinny, but he's got some good stuff. Available in the pin today, Looper, Thompson, Hancock, Nelson, and Rincon. Sidney Ponson has looked very sharp in his last two outings. Four innings in both those games. The only blemish, a solo home run allowed in each. And today, the run was scored after the air by Eckstein. Runner at second base. Langer Hans batting in the spot previously occupied by Brian Jordan, top of the order. Sidney may not pitch as, and throw as hard as he did one time, but he has a good understanding of pitching. He has a repertoire of pitches that he can execute and throws a lot of ground balls. One and two the count. Langer Hans, one of those young players that the Braves called up last year. Once again, as Sidney's trying to resurrect his career. One of the choices, a compliment to the Cardinal fans, was to come here and know that people would be supportive. Just got a piece. And it's one ball, two strikes. This lineup for the Braves is a pretty darn good one. When you look at Giles leading off for Kyle Sign, of course, is a free agent with Los Angeles. Then Renteri in the second spot in the order. You've got Chipper Jones, Andrew Jones, and Frank Kaur. Mix in LaRoche, McCann, and Langerhans. It's a pretty good lineup. 
A lot of people looking towards the Mets instead of Atlanta. Hit out to center. Edmonds makes the catch. A BB right at him. What's on tap is brought to you by Bud Light. Saturday at noon on WB11. Good to see our buddy Wayne Hagen will be paired up with Rick Horton next Saturday at noon on the WB, and then we'll be here on Sunday. What's on tap brought to you by Bud Light. And congratulations to uh, our friend Bob Carpenter who has moved on to the Washington Nationals. With two outs. Batter is Tony Pena. Filling in for Renteria. And yes, this is Tony Pena's son. And yes, he picks up an RBI base hit into right center field. Cuts the lead in half. It's 4-2. Trying to extend it to a double. And he will as the ball gets away. Base hit RBI. So that scores Todd Pratt from second. And it's 4-2. Uh, set up outside, see if the ball is kind of a hanger. It stays up a little bit, breaking ball. And just a controlled swing, a level swing over the head of the second base out in the right center. And here's got a 4-2 ball game. Cesar Crespo will dig in. Playing third base, Chipper Jones started the game for Bobby Cox's club. He pulls it foul. Cardinals have a right-hander getting loose in their bullpen. No activity for Atlanta. That's Hancock there. Doesn't look like he's overweight, does he? Not at all. That's why he was released by Cincinnati. He said he was 17 pounds overweight. And he said, you still got my high school weight. Ponson fields it. Crespo retired. Braves pick up a run. Midway through the fifth, Sam Dammit, Lachlan Albrabowski with you. Grapefruit League play. Cardinals lead it four to two, four hits aside. Here in the bottom of the fifth, the Cardinals have the top of the order with Eckstein, Miles, and Roland. Roland with three RBIs today. After five innings at work, you'd figure that'd be it for Sidney Ponson as Hancock continues to get loose in the bullpen. David Eckstein today has been hit by a pitch and scored in the first. And Singleton scored in the third. Both on RBI pickups by Rowland. Cardinals have had six consecutive winning seasons. The league's most wins since the 2001 season. Well, Dan, sometimes, you know, we talk about a five-tool player. And... I like to remind you at times, yeah, the guy's five tools, but he can't play. David Eckstein's the other end of it. You know, average or minus in all the categories, but he's a winner. It was this time last year. You might remember everybody was questioning his arm and replacing Renteria and what were the Cardinals going to do at shortstop. Haven't heard a thing about it this year. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's his seventh walk that he has drawn in spring training. Well, on base three times in three plate appearances. He's already scored two runs, one for one, hit by a pitch. Hector Luna will pitch run for Eckstein. Luna, one of the guys battling for that second base spot. Nice round of applause for even just after one year of fan favorite David Eckstein. Cardinals have an off day on Tuesday. And then I think you'll see guys start being extended a little bit, and really make a push, of course. Incarnacion and Albert Pujols will be back at that time. Others still have not had one game with all their position players and all their regulars intact. And you were talking about it before. Uh, the fact is that a lot of people were frustrated with the World Baseball Classic, including Tony La Russa. Well, Tony felt that if there was a time to play, it was going to be after the season. And you just eliminate the playoff teams from the roster but guys would be in plain chip there's no perfect time but and he the league is not going to shut down for two weeks no they're not going to shut down and you know like cuba's in middle of their season right now the orient players but one thing he noted is all the other managers 
They all hit and run. They did, they did steals. They did all kinds of things to try and manufacture and win ball games. Now the part of the U.S. team was kind of because they were not in playing shape. And the managers were reluctant to try to push as hard. But Tony felt like uh, it was an embarrassment to the to the Americans, and you know, it just felt like if anything, it it uh, it hurt the world's uh, thought process and how good the American players are. One ball, one strike on Miles with Luna at first base. Luna is running. Little tapper to short. Pena has to hurry up, and he just gets Miles. They're starting the runner that advances Luna to second base. That's one of the pluses by having Hector Luna on this team, his speed, Al, and that's probably ahead of the other two, Miles and Junior Spivey. Scott rolling one for two, but... Uh, you know, the other two aren't slow by any means either. No, and uh, but you have to go out there and really compete. As Tony loves to set up competition. Oh. Roland's had a nice day with three RBIs. Pratt got crossed up. He got crossed up, so what kind of day has Scott Roland had? Take you back to the first. After a hit by pitch, David Eckstein sacrificed by Miles. Roland would ground out to Chipper Jones. Eckstein would score the first run of this ball game. Then it was Roland. A base hit up the middle. That would score Sidney Ponson, who had singled to start the inning. Then a hit and run by Eckstein. Both those two reached in. Roland brought him in. Go back to the base running on that hit and run, too. Allowing Eckstein to wind up at... Uh, Second base after Frank Coor threw to third. David took second. Heads up play. Roland brought him in. 2 0 the count with Luna, the runner at second base. Cardinals leading 4 2. In the dirt, taken by Pratt. Edmonds on deck. Speaking of the World Baseball Classic, Edmonds said he was disappointed in the fact that he wasn't even on the preliminary roster by Buck Martinez. He said, if I would have known those games could be played in Anaheim, having a chance to play in front of some of my family and friends, it would have sparked my interest even a little bit more. 3-0 pitch, take it for a strike, 3-1. and one. We're in the fifth. One out, the 3-1 pitch. Take it for a ball. Runners at first and second as Edmonds will dig in. And joining us in our broadcast booth, the general manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, Walt Jockety. Good to see you, Walt. Good to see you, Dan. Welcome to, to uh, Florida. A little better climate down here. Yeah, I don't have the sun today. That's all right. It's a little better climate. It's 42 back home in St. Louis. So. 77 right here in Jupiter, and uh, the Cardinals lead this ball game 4-2. to two. How has uh, spring camp gone for you so far? Good. It's actually gone quick. You, know, you get down here, and you sometimes wonder how it's going to go, and, and uh, boy, this, this camp is really breezed by, so we only have two weeks left, and still a lot of decisions to make. Al and I were just talking about it. Are you a fan of the World Baseball Classic, a guy that's probably walking on pins and needles watching that thing? Well, I enjoyed watching it, uh, and I think there's a, a lot of good things that came out of it. I'm glad our uh, guys got back when they did, and I wish, wish them poorly, but I'm glad, <laughs> glad they came back and did, got them back at least a couple days early. But I think it was, uh, I enjoyed watching the game. I thought it was, uh, it was a lot of fun, and, and uh, uh, I think uh, throughout the, especially the, the uh, international uh, teams really did well and, and I think the city's got or their country's rather got uh, very excited about it. Runners at first and second batter is Edmonds and uh, let's just throw a bunch at you. What are you expecting out of Jim Edmonds this season? Can he get back to where he was before? Yes. There's yes. Just, yes. 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 <laughs> are these yes and no answers or no. no, no. I, I, believe, like to I, a little bit. I believe that uh, Jimmy will. Jim worked very hard this winter and uh, I think uh, uh, physically he's he's in good shape, and I think uh, well, 
you know during the regular season i'd probably go over the guy's head but <laughs> walt you also know when he came out and said that i was too pull conscious i got to get back to what made me successful that's a good start right there yeah and that's you're right i mean there were some things he he did differently last year that he's going to have to make adjustments to i think he's worked very hard this this uh, spring on that but a lot of it was uh, physical too and i think he uh, he i know all winter he worked very very hard was on a very uh, uh, strict uh, nutritional uh, and, and diet program as, uh, as well as a weight program. Here's John Rodriguez trying to make this club. I can attest to that liquid diet during the New Year's. I'm not going to comment. <laughs> <laughs> Where does John Rodriguez stand at this point, Al? Well, what's I'm the Joe Andrew we'll here? The wall. What, well, I think that. Uh, you know, John had some physical problems with that rotator cuff tendonitis, but he's got to prove he can make adjustments to off-speed pitches. And, you know, defensively and, and base running, he's got to show he's a little more heads up. His chances, yeah, obviously, well. his bat's got to carry him. He's he's uh, uh, had a little problem with the shoulder this spring, but I think it's better now. And uh, he's got two weeks left to show us that, that he still belongs. So, it's, uh, is there a clear-cut guy that's in left right now? Taguchi. Yeah. I think Taguchi can pencil in there. And I would think that Tony's going to give Taguchi uh, a lot of playing time there, and then we'll just see who else will, will uh, filter in there. Plus, he's you know he'll give Edmonds and and, and Canarsione days off. So it'll be a lot of work for someone else. And Walt, you know Schumacher getting extended playing times. So it didn't hurt to get that RBI double. Last time up, yeah, that was Molina great. from first, right? Because his defense is, is going to be crucial. I can see that uh, Kendall worked with Molina on his space running and speed while he's <laughs> yes. at the World Classic. So, uh, yeah, Schumacher's. I mean, and, and uh, you guys haven't had the opportunity to see all these games on him. He has made some unbelievable yes. plays, defensive plays down here in right field, center field, left field. Uh, threw a guy out, the, or made a, uh, made a great diving catch in right field. Uh, I think it was against the Mets. Threw uh, with a runner on third and, and uh, got up and threw the ball into home plate. And, and the guy got about halfway and went back. So uh, he's, if he can hit, he's got a chance to be uh, a guy that can really help us a lot. As, as much as uh, Tony double switches in particular defensive purposes late in the game, it, uh, it's got to be a plus for him. Then. Yeah, and he's a left-handed hitter, and, and he can do a lot of things with the bat. He can, he's got speed. So, hit the second. Rodriguez is going to strand two. Walt Jockety, the Cardinals GM, is with us. We have played five. He's going to stay with us. It's 4-2 St. Louis. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC. Dan McLaughlin, Al Roboski with you. There's a look at Sotoguchi. Out in center field, and a new pitcher is in the uh, ball game for St. Louis. Josh Hancock trying to make this club, the former Cincinnati Red. Also in the booth with us, GM Walt Jockety, and uh, Al was talking about this guy being one of the surprises of camp. Tell us about. He has it. been a surprise. He was released uh, right at the beginning of spring training by Cincinnati for a weight problem, and we we're trying to figure out what the weight problem was because it wasn't he, he looks like he's in pretty good shape curveball that's ripped down the left field line and foul off the bat of Andrew Jones and he's really pitched well for us and, and he's looked good and, and I know uh, Tony and Dunk have been impressed with him and, and he's uh, still a candidate for a role in the bullpen and if you remember two years ago he pitched a great game against the Cardinals at Bush Stadium he was hurt most of last year but he had a, a, a long relief appearance against the Cardinals and pitched well also. Good pitch there. Nasty stuff as Jones swings and misses. That's the first out. How about uh, Sidney Ponsone and the way that uh, he has developed so far here in spring training as we get a look at our Hardy's hot pitch of the game from Hancock. You know, uh, Sidney's done well and, and uh, uh, has fit in well with the, the ball club. I know the starters... Uh, uh, have embraced him and, and you know he's still in competition with Reyes and, and Wainwright for that last spot but uh, he may may have the edge because of his experience and, and uh, you know he's uh, you know he, he's got he's got great stuff his velocity still isn't right where it was uh, uh, 
earlier in his career, but we think the more he pitches, the more he'll uh, improve that. But he, he, he's he's done very well for us. Walt, is it fair to say because of Reyes' arm problems in the past that he has got to be used as a starter, as yes. a starter, whether it's here or down in the minor leagues? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He, he is not a... Uh, not be a, in our opinion is not a candidate for the bullpen he needs to start and i think you also want to see him have a full year without any health interruptions correct yeah i think you know he needs to uh durability is a, a big factor with our our pitching and, and uh you, you, you need to have people that uh, you know guys that run out there every five days you know we've had very few starters over the last few years they're, they're usually the guys we start the season with will will uh finish the, the season and have very few uh uh, replacement parts so for one and two the count on Adam LaRoche and of course the key to going deep into ball games Cardinal relievers ERA title winners the last two years because they pitched the fewest innings right and, and I think uh, you know Dunk has done a, uh, a good job with uh, with all the guys but I think he, he's worked well with Sydney and getting him uh, on track, which we, we knew would happen. That was one of the reasons why Sydney wanted to come here and, and why uh, he, he's got a chance to be very successful. 2 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Two strikeouts to start this game for Hancock here in the sixth. And let's take a look at the uh, afternoon here for Sydney Ponson wearing that unlucky number 13, Walt, but let's hope it turns lucky this year. A couple of strikeouts. Allow, allow just uh, two runs. You, know, you make you make your own uh, luck. That's right. That's right. Sometimes it's uh, a lucky number for people. Jeff Francoeur, the hitter. I find it kind of intriguing. Hancock, you know, you get released, and then you know, from a pitching poor team, the Cincinnati Reds, then you come to one of the pitching rich teams. I'll tell you something about his confidence too. <laughs> You're right. Wall is there. Is there a guy that has emerged at second base before we let you go? I know we got a lot of fans back home that are well. I think this. I think uh, Spivey uh, still is is uh, got to be given a lot of uh, chance there, and, uh, and but also Miles. Miles got off to a great start at the beginning of camp, and then hurt his uh, wrist, and is now back playing, and and uh, will get a lot of playing time. And uh, Luna hasn't played over there much, so it's, it's going to be probably Spivey or Miles, I would think, and maybe maybe some with Luna. But Spivey, Spivey's got a little bit of a sore shoulder too. I think it's affect his swing. So um, you know, the, the trainers are working on that, trying to get that corrected before uh, too long. And it's also what happens the last two weeks. Right, right. Yeah, there's still a lot of time ahead of us. Two balls, two strikes on Jeff Rancor. No runners on. He just got a piece of that pitch and again one of the other problems with the World Baseball Classic is a lot of the pitchers haven't been facing say really major league caliber players you know all the way time every game but right now you're talking about three of the best young players the Atlanta Braves and one of their mainstays and Andrew Jones and he's going right through Hancock's going right through you're right and you can see how he's he changes speeds, but you know the can they respect that, but they can't catch up with the with the fastball either. And he's making nasty pitches on both sides of the plate, nothing in the middle. And by the way, that's Gary Bennett behind the plate. Any other uh, surprises from camp uh, out of the bullpen? I guess Alan Bennis is another name that has emerged. Alan Bennis, and you know there is a chance that Wainwright could go into the bullpen if he doesn't make it as, as the fifth starter. And he's had a great spring, very very good spring, and he looks like a, a very ma he's matured a lot and, and played uh, or pitched well for us. Long throw from third, stretched by Duncan, and a one two three inning for Hancock. Thank you, Walt. My pleasure, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in next week. You got it. That's Walt Jockety, the GM of the St. Louis Cardinals. Hancock got the first man he saw with a nasty breaking ball, Andrew Jones. Then LaRoche, he would go down. And Frank Core retired after the ground ball to third. Lance Cormier, new pitcher for Atlanta. As the Cardinals lead it 4-2. to two. Bottom of the sixth, we're at Roger Dean Stadium in Jupiter, Florida. Numbers on Cormier in relief of Hudson, who went five. And Chris Duncan takes a strike. Scott Spezio on deck. And it's quickly nothing in two. Chris Duncan, lots of at-bats in this spring training with Albert Pujols playing at the World Baseball Classic. And Duncan 
four homers, nine RBIs. With Dad watching. Brother Shelley in the Yankee system. Duncan last year at 265 in the minor leagues at uh, AAA. And a swing and a miss, and he strikes out. And he struck out for the third time this afternoon. So a rough afternoon for Chris Duncan. And it brings in Scott Spezio, as Al was telling you, a very good shot to make this club. Schumacher on deck. Scott Spezio has missed considerable time the last couple of seasons with a bad back. Ed Spezio, his father, played with the Cardinals. This would be the third father-son combo to make it through the Cardinals organization. Kind of that super sub that the Cardinals are looking for. And it's one ball, one strike. He was with Anaheim, then signed with Seattle, a three-year deal. They released him for the final year of his uh, contract. He's had significant injuries the last couple of years. He has dyed his facial hair red in hope of making the Cardinals squad. As that ball gets away from the Cardinals bullpen. A lefty getting loose for St. Louis. It's a count of two balls and one strike with one out nobody on. Pass ball in there for a strike. And it's two and two. Our thanks to Walt Jackety for stopping by. 2-2 pitch. Tap foul. Cardinals will face Atlanta again uh, tomorrow and then the off day on Tuesday for St. Louis. Cormier trying to get his sign correct with Todd Pratt. In relief of Tim Hudson, both the starters went five innings. Spezio rips it out to right field, and it's over the head of the right fielder, Peltonen, who just checked in the game. And Scott Spezio will trot into second base. A one-out double. Cardinals tickets, a personalized bat, a night stay at the finest hotel in St. Louis. It's the Adams Mark Hotel Package. It offers fans access to the hottest tickets in town through the finest hotel in town. Call the Adams Mark Hotel today and reserve your tickets to an upcoming game along with a night stay. Rooms are going very fast because of ticket availability. Number to call is 800-444-ADAM. 800-444-ADAM. Your Skip Schumacher has an RBI double. And a ground out, one for two on the afternoon. Ground ball left side, another base hit for Schumacher. Jose Okendo will hold up the runner, that's Spezio. And let's check in with Al downstairs with Junior Spivey, Al. All right, thanks, Dan. Well, we've talked an awful lot about it. We want to welcome you to St. Louis. I know you grew up as a Cardinal fan and were drafted out of high school by St. Louis, but now it looks like you can have that chance to wear the Cardinal uniform. Yeah, actually, it was out of junior college, but uh, yeah, it's a dream come true for me, and uh, I'm excited about it. I can't wait uh, until opening day, and uh, you know, it just feels good to put on this uniform and to be, along, be around you know, great ball players such as Lou Brock and, and Willie McGee, guys like that that I, you know, I kind of idolized growing up. And Junior, I know you've been an all-star. You've played on a world championship team. How do you compare this atmosphere? Uh, it's just a very relaxed atmosphere. Um, it's, it's, camp is going well. It's not going as well as I would like for it to go as far as like my numbers and things like that, but it's going good. I'm working uh, to get myself ready for, for, for the season. I know you got one big fan in Hal McRae. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're working. We're doing a lot of work, so you're trying to straighten it out and doing a lot of extra work, so you know, I just want to continue to grind it out and then uh, hopefully it'll be ready by, by opening day. And competition's always fun. Oh, yeah. Competition's great, man. Uh, you know, so I'm just going to continue to battle it out and see what happens. All right. Congratulations. Welcome to St. Louis. Thanks a lot. Al, thank you. It's uh, a 167 average so far for Junior Spivey. So he has struggled, but a career 278 hitter. He signed for just over a million dollars for the Cardinals. And that's been a position where the Cardinals 
get that player for a year, and it turns out to be the right move. Tony Womack two years ago, Mark Rizalonic a year ago, and now Junior Spivey, former All-Star back in 2002, battling with Hector Luna and Aaron Miles. As the runner is off from first, a swinging butt and a base hit for Bennett. Safe at second. A Schumacher, and the Cardinals lead it by the score, five to two. Infield hit for Gary Bennett in an RBI. He takes us to the top of the order at Hector Luna. Aggressive play by Schumacher, almost caught off second. And now it's Hector Luna trying to battle for that second base spot or bench spot with his team. One out, runners at first and second. It's 5-2 Cardinals. Cardinals with runs in the first, the third, the fourth, and now here in the sixth. First pitch to Luna, a little check swing, hit to short. That's one, can they turn two? Safe at first is Hector Luna. And runners at first and third. With two outs, and let's check in with Al Roboski. Well, thanks, Dan. Scott Spezio, you just get in the game, you, you make the final out with it's been a nice play at third base, and then all of a sudden you have to hit a double and run the bases. Good thing you got in shape this year. Yeah, I had to. You know, I uh, was a little worried in the offseason. Nobody wanted me, so it was uh, great to be picked up by uh, St. Louis, and uh, you know, I'm just trying to work my butt off and stay here. Well, the neat thing is, is maybe nobody wanted you, but they want you now. You've really opened up some eyes here with your versatility, and you're the, the right veteran presence for this good ball club. I feel uh, I feel like this team is an incredible team. It's a great opportunity for me. Um, you know, I just love being around guys that love the game and uh, pat each other on the back and care for each other and want to do whatever it takes to win, and that's what this bunch of guys is. And you were kind of quoted as when you came over here. You knew a little bit about the Cardinals, but when you walked in here and saw the atmosphere, the dedication, this was even better than your world championship team in Anaheim. Yeah, the start of the season in Anaheim in 2002 was nothing like this is right here. By the end of the year, it was it was great chemistry. But this chemistry from day one has been unbelievable. And uh, I think with the guys coming back now, like Albert and Encarnacion and all that, it's just going to get better. Um, you think you're going to be able to convince me to dye this extremely gray stuff red like yours? <laughs> you got to do it. I think it's the wave of the future. The wave of the future. Uh, maybe, we, maybe we could do something for charity or something like that. But you know what? Congratulations. I know your dad has to be tickled pink. They're up to upstate Illinois and, and got your dad number. What would it mean to you to take the field at the new Bush Stadium just like your dad did in 66 at the old Bush Stadium? That'd be incredible. You know, I got chills when I came in and saw I had the same number as him, and uh, I've always loved St. Louis. Every time he took me down to one of the old-timers games, uh, just gave me goosebumps. So I'd love to do it, and I'd love to be a part of a world championship team like he was twice. You know, I'd love to match him. I've got one world championship ring. He's got two. Maybe we can tie. How about did Lou or Gibby or any of those guys remember you as a little kid? No, I actually wasn't around. Uh, you know, when he was playing, but for the old timers games there, I remember when I came around and, uh, you know, kind of poked fun at me then, and I'm a little bit bigger now, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. You really made a, a good impression, and everybody's pulling for you. Scott Spezio, Dan. All right, thank you, Al. Again, he missed considerable time with that bad back, but uh, he said he's 100% heading into spring training this year with the Cardinals. That's Scott Spezio. Looks like he has made this team as a bench player, a super sub, so to speak, for the Cardinals, and a switch hitter. Aaron Miles is the batter. Cardinals picked up another run on the block during the interview. It's 6-2 St. Louis. As Skip Schumacher would score. Spezio has also scored a run. Hector Luna, the runner at second base. A count of two balls and two strikes. On the batter, Aaron Miles, who has sacrificed, struck out, and grounded out today. And it's 3-2. and two. Cardinals a season ago, 162. 50 home wins, 50 road wins. The 3-2 pitch. A grounder to second base. And the Cardinals are done in their half of the six, but add to their lead with two more runs. It's 6-2 St. Louis. 
FSN Midwest is re-airing several of the best and most memorable games from last season. Cardinals countdown to 06. The final four of our countdown kicks off this Saturday as Albert Pujols will flex his muscles in the 13th inning. It's a two-run shot against the Astros to win that game. Cardinals countdown to 06 this Saturday, 7 o'clock on FSN Midwest. Ricardo Rincon will take over. Following Josh Hancock and Sidney Ponson, and let's check back in with Al. All right, Dan, thank you very much. You know, last inning when we had Walt Jockey up there, this young man was pitching Josh Hancock, and um, I don't think he did anything to disappoint anybody. One more outstanding effort. Thanks. Uh, objectives just go out there, throw strikes, get haters out, and uh, get the team back in to hit some more. Well, you've opened up some eyes here, and I kind of said after you released from Cincinnati, why did you pick uh, St. Louis? And you gave me a very simple reason. Yeah, St. Louis was the only team that called. And, uh, you know, I think they are very thankful they did. But, you know, you a couple years ago, I remember you had a start against St. Louis, an outstanding start. Last year you had some physical problems. You came late in the season with Cincinnati, a couple good relief outings, but uh, you know how to pitch. Well, it's, you know, it's over the years. I played in minor league, uh, minor league and major league for about seven years now. So it's just getting all those innings in and just come in and, like I said, just throw strikes. It's objective. Yeah, you try and keep it simple. And I know uh, Rincon's out there and records the first man. But I think this pitching staff and the bullpen has a chance to be better than it was the last couple of years. It does. Uh, you know, the objective is to get those guys out there in situations and learn what they can do. and. And uh, I think this team's going to be really good this year. All right, congratulations and welcome to St. Louis. Thank you very much. Thank Dan? you, Al. Josh Hancock with Al down in the uh, dugout. Rincon, newest addition to that bullpen for St. Louis. Ricardo Rincon, 5'9", 190 pounder, played for Mexico in the World Baseball Classic. It's a 6'2", St. Louis. Todd Pratt is the hitter. Two balls and no strikes. Career numbers for Rincon in his ninth season. ERA over three, 21 and 24. He does have some saves on that resume. Began his career in the major leagues with Pittsburgh back in 1997. Then with Cleveland. And spent the last four years with Oakland. Popped up into left center field. So Taguchi he takes over for Edmonds, makes the catch, two up and two down. This bullpen has been a bright spot for the Cardinals last couple of seasons. Led the National League in ERA the last two years. And in talking with Dave Duncan and Tony La Russa, they would love to find another Al Reyes or maybe a Kiko Calero. Al Reyes, a guy that was traded twice and released three times. Kiko Calero, kind of a scrap heap guy that they picked up. And guys that can get key outs from that sixth inning on. And maybe it's Josh Hancock who fits into that role and into that mold. I figure the Cardinals have Rincon, Flores, and then a battle by Tyler Johnson and Carmen Kelly for that third spot on the left side of the bullpen. Jeff Nelson, longtime veteran, is getting loose in the bullpen for St. Louis. It's two balls and no strikes. Michael Ryan is the batter. Two and nothing the count. The pitch. The grounder. Bad hop. Backing up Miles. Rincon to first. Great play. Took a bad hop. Looked like it caught the end of the glove of Duncan. Miles was there backing up. Rincon covering it first. We move to the bottom of the seventh here in Jupiter, Florida. It's 6-2 St. Louis on seven hits. Braves just to two runs on four hits. And here is Sotoguchi, who very well could be your starting left fielder for the St. Louis Cardinals here in 06. Happy birthday wishes to loyal Cardinal fans, Patty Crayer. And also Wesley Hogg, who just turned 16. And Taguchi has retired his first plate appearance this afternoon. Back by popular demand, it's the Hyundai long drive inning. Your chance to win a brand new Hyundai Sonata XL. And coming soon to your local Hyundai dealers. Stay tuned for the details on our broadcast throughout the season.
Belleville native, Brian Daubach digs in with one out, nobody on. Let's check back in with Al downstairs. Well, thank you, Dan. Of course, we got Hall of Famer Lou Brock, the base burglar. Lou, is it still fun to put on the uniform and come out here in spring? Well, it's a little tough, but it really is. But uh, that's how tough it is that uh, we can't wait to get here to put it on. And I know you're a fan during the season and come in spring training. You're like all the Cardinal fans, kind of wonder what this year's team's going to bring. Uh, what are you, is your assessment? Well, it's, I hate to say it's early, but these guys are just rounding into shape today. We're seeing some pretty good hitting against some pretty good pitching. So uh, I think in a sense, Brian, did you saw here, he can really swing a bat. But by the same token, they are really working hard in trying to put it all together and see who's going to be what and who's going to be doing this and that and what have you. So it's a little tough call for Tony. Yeah, you know, Brian Dombach yeah. is from Belleville, and he's uh, hit 20 home runs three or four years in a row uh, in the American League a couple years back. Tough to make this team with all the competition, but uh, that's... You know, he's opening up eyes when you got scouts in the stands, too. Well, that's true. In fact, uh, you know, with Tony, you got to be pretty flexible. The way baseball is played today, you must be flexible. That means that a guy has got to play infield, outfield, and does everything except catch uh, to just try to make a spot on the team. So that's what Brian is up against, and he's a tremendous hitter. Uh, hopefully, uh, he can stick, but it's going to be hard. Let's talk about your forte, base stealing. A guy like Schumacher. You know, is is a young man that's got a lot of talent, very good defensively. He's hit the ball well today. He can run, but he doesn't know how to steal. You know, how do you get somebody over that fear of failure? Well, I don't think you have to steal nowadays. All you have to have good speed, and with the threat of, of stealing, that's going to be uh, uh, to his uh, to his advantage. And but again, I don't think they use the stolen base that much. So it shouldn't affect him at all. All right, the great Lou Brock. He knows a thing about steals. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lou. All right. Dan? All right, Al, thank you. John Rodriguez is the hitter with a man at second base, Brian Daubach. Daubach has had a very good spring, and uh, Al was talking about those home runs four times in his career as Rodriguez draws the one-on walk. Four times in his career, he had 20 or more home runs, and each time it was with Boston, 99, 2001, and 02. Spent one year with uh, Chicago, the White Sox over in the American League, then re-signed by Boston. And last year, briefly up with the Mets and only hit 120 in 15 games and trying to make this club with St. Louis. It's going to be tough. And speaking of tough, it's been a tough afternoon for this man at the plate, Chris Duncan. He has struck out three times. Goes the opposite way. That's a base hit. Daubach will score easily. That rolls all the way to the wall. Two runners are going to score as Rodriguez is going to score all the way from first base. Chris Duncan, a good piece of hitting to the opposite field, and that makes it an 8-2 ball game. And, Dan, that is why they love Chris Duncan, because when he does have tough days, he doesn't quit on himself. He continues to compete, and there he delivers another big RBI, a base hit. You know, he's leading the team in home runs and RBIs, but they want him to hit and get, you know, every day get his four hits in the minor leagues. It's now 11 RBIs this spring for Chris Duncan. He struck out 15 times, but yet he has driven the baseball very well. And Al, as you all know, he's getting a great opportunity because Pujols has been with his team at the World Baseball Classic, and it's good to see what some of these young guys can do and what they can bring to the table. And I think, you know, when you talk about Chris Duncan, you know, nobody really real thought he'd have a realistic opportunity. Sure, he hit a home run, the last home run at Bush Stadium in the final game last year. But he has opened up the eyes, and everybody now sees the potential, and that potential is around the corner. Scott Spezio, who doubled and replaced uh, Molina in the uh, seventh spot in this lineup, doubled and scored back in the sixth. How are guys treating you down there? Are they leaving you alone? Uh, yeah, they're doing a good job. <laughs> no pies in the face, no no bucket showers, you know. It's early. <laughs> yeah. Spezio is on board for the second time in this ball game. That brings in Skip Schumacher. I don't know about you, Al, but in listening with uh, Walt Jockety and the fact that uh, Skip has played so well defensively, it sounds like he has made a name for himself in this spring training and has a legitimate shot to make this team. Well, you know, he was a September call-up, so you know they had interest in him, but I think because no one has really claimed that left field position, the guy that you know the most about is, is uh, Taguchi, but I think, you know, 
Schumacher's one of those type of guys that can be a significant player on an outstanding ball club. Not a regular, but he's a guy that, you know, can go in, he can play great defense, he can be a character guy, he always uh, keep his head high and never get down on himself, but he's starting to show more potential with the bat than I think some people thought. RBI double his last time up. He singled and scored in the sixth. It's eight to two Cardinals. And that pitch catches the outside corner. Jeff Nelson has been throwing for quite some time in the Cardinals bullpen, and Joey Devine is getting loose for Atlanta. Number one pick by the Braves a year ago and actually made up with the team. Great play by the shortstop, Pena, and a double play. But the Cardinals pick up two more runs on the RBI double by Duncan. 8-2, St. Louis. Take a look at today's play of the game. It's brought to you by Budweiser. Ricardo Rincon, a heads-up play. The pitcher for St. Louis last inning. Off the glove of Duncan, but he was hustling all the way as Miles was backing up. Here's a look at Rincon. And pitchers have done this about a thousand times already in the last month or so. That's your Budweiser play of the game. Long-time veteran in the major leagues, Jeff Nelson. Originally selected by the Dodgers back in the 22nd round of the 84 draft. Jeff Nelson into the game for St. Louis. Back downstairs to my partner, Al. Well, thanks, Dan. You know, you have Jeff Nelson, the veteran. Then you have the young pitching phenoms like Anthony Reyes trying to make the, the team. And Anthony, you can just go out there and control the things that you can control. You get to start tomorrow against the Atlanta Braves. I know you have to be looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm, uh, I mean, I faced him last year and I uh, did pretty well, so I'm, I'm looking to go out there and, and hopefully do the same thing as I did last year. I know they're asking you to work on a sinker, and then fundamentally you're trying to make the team and try and create a new pitch. You have great confidence in your forcing fastball, um, but they say, you know, that this is a pitch you're going to need when you get to the major leagues, but it's kind of tough when you're competing for a job. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's something that they definitely feel that I, that I need to do uh, to be able to stay up there. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm working hard trying to get it down, and I'm a, usually a pretty quick learner. So I'll think I'll have this thing down by the spring training. Well, the one thing everybody knows is you know how to pitch. You are a great student of the game, and uh, you know this is this is just a great opportunity. I've always said it's, you know, you don't want to really get to the big leagues until you have a defined role, whether you're in the rotation or a job where you're going to pitch three or four times a week position player so you know you just go out there and you battle hard yeah i mean uh, i mean however they want to use me if they want, they're going to use me in the pen i mean it doesn't really matter to me as long as i get to wear jersey and it's and you like the one that says cardinals birds in the bat in st louis i do i love it all right this it, this got to be fun being around such veteran pitchers how much have they helped you uh they helped me a lot actually uh last year before my start I talked to carp a little bit and he said uh you know, just uh, try not to change anything. And um, I you know I, I listened to those guys, and uh, last year it worked out. And uh, came in this year, and I mean, uh, they, they got a lot to say, and, and I'm just here to listen and learn. All right, Anthony Reyes, good luck with your start tomorrow. Thank you. Back up to you, Dan. Al, he is uh, one and one on the season, is Anthony Reyes. His ERA is 8.68, nine in the third innings, and he's given up 15 hits. So he gets a big chance tomorrow. That's a huge start for him. Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, you know, competition is great, and there's no reason why maybe, you know, that uh, you you have a deficiency with their second base, and maybe a trade down the road because Cardinals, in a sense, have an abundance of starting pitching. I'm interested in this guy on the mound, and that's uh, Jeff Nelson, guy that's been around for a long time, plenty of postseason experience with the uh, Seattle Mariners, the Yankees, Boston. Uh, he's got a chance to make this club, and you figure that uh, these are big spots for him as we go down the stretch. You're exactly right, and I talked to Dave Duncan before the game, and specifically mentioning Nelson, and at this point, he had not been throwing enough strikes, and when he did throw, his, uh, you know, strikes that are up in the zone, he was being hit hard, so this is very important for him to have a good outing from this point forward. I'm looking forward to having you back up in the booth, Al. Okay, I'll bring you some dessert. Thank you. Nothing into the count on uh, Pena. Tony Pena Jr. made a nice play short on that double play. Off the bat of Skip Schumacher to end last inning. And a swing and a miss on a breaking ball from Jeff Nelson. Two up and two down. Very tough on right-handed hitters. We'll see why with this motion. Can drop down. He's coming at you and then drops out of the strike zone. 
It's a strikeout for Nelson. The pitching today has been spectacular for the Cardinals. Started with Sidney Ponson, Josh Hancock, Ricardo Rincon, and now Nelson. Combined to give up just four hits, two runs. One of those was earned. Breaking ball and therefore strike on Cesar Crespo. Third baseman for Atlanta took over for Chipper Jones. Chipper had two plate appearances. Walked and was over one. We're in the eighth, two outs. Nobody on in an eight to two St. Louis lead. Right-hander Brad Thompson getting loose in the Cardinal bullpen. After a very good rookie campaign a year ago. Looking to make this club. One and two the count. Atlanta Braves last season, 90 and 72, another first place finish in the National League East Division. One of their concerns, the bullpen, not so for the Cardinals. Swing and a miss, good job by Nelson. Two strikeouts in the inning. We head to the bottom of the eighth. It's all St. Louis this afternoon at Roger Dean Stadium. Cardinals up by six runs, it's eight to two. Our singular wireless question for you to text who should be the Cardinals fifth starter for this season. And the results are in. It's Sidney Ponson. Sidney Ponson, the uh, selection for your singular wireless question. We're back in Jupiter, Florida. Dan McLaughlin, Al Roboski with you, and Joey Devine will be the new pitcher for the Atlanta Braves. This very well could be their future closer. And the future may be now for Devine and Atlanta. He was their former uh, first round pick, 27th overall last year. And he skyrocketed out through their system, actually made it to the major leagues, but then at the end of the season is when he really suffered some tough losses, gave up a couple of grand slams and then pitched in postseason play and gave up a home run that eventually knocked him out of uh, the playoffs against Houston. Yeah, his first uh, two major league starts, he gave up grand slams, but this spring, a different story. I mean, he is racking up the strikeouts. Nobody scored upon him. Rietzma is scheduled to be their closer, but... How long will it be before Joy Devine takes over? Hitter is Gary Bennett, Cardinal catcher in relief uh, Molina. We want to remind you that uh, we are your home of Cardinals baseball. 113 telecasts beginning this afternoon. We actually are going to be bringing you what we think will be a very special telecast on April 4th. The uh, AAA and AA teams will hook up in St. Louis at the New Bush Stadium and we'll have that broadcast. We expect a lot of people be interested in seeing the new ballpark. Well, that uh, game took 20 minutes to sell out. And I think uh, you and I will be uh, really looking forward to being the host of the new ballpark. Kind of show everybody all the nooks and crannies. When do you see the Cardinal Clubhouse? I've been, I was just there, you know, at the time I was there, it was about maybe a month ago, Al. It wasn't quite uh, finished yet, but I, I mean, you could just see the layout, how spectacular it was going to be. See the, the, uh, hydrotherapy pool with the motorized uh, treadmill inside of it. They have jet currents or water resistance. They have, uh, you know, obviously like whirlpools with hot water, but they also have cold pools where you can put three or four people in there. It's almost used to have to fill up a, a, an old whirlpool with ice water. But uh, you can get guys in there. It's got a leg or problem or something like this, and they can do a, a treadmill inside a pool. The video room, they feel, is uh, second to none. The weight room is huge. They've got the batting cages. The batting cages, unbelievable. Which is right, basically, just right off the dugout underneath. Batter is Luna. One ball, one strike after Gary Bennett was hit by the pitch. He stands at first. So again, we've got uh, 113 telecasts for you here on FSN. Just joining us, good start for Sidney Ponson again. That's three consecutive above average starts for Ponson. Five innings, two runs allowed. Four hits, 
Walked two and struck out one. One of the runs unearned. Luna stays away. Air Miles on deck. Brad Thompson still getting loose in the uh, Cardinal bullpen. That's ball four to Luna. So Devine has come in and hit a man. Walks Luna and now it's Miles. Who's played every inning of this ball game. A rarity. Well, to try and make up for some of that time where he had the, where he missed basically two weeks with the bad wrist, but every time you get a playing opportunity, you got a time to impress, and he sure did backing up that one uh, ball off the glove of Duncan and threw the ball to Rincon covering first. Your play of the game, if I remember. Brought to you by Budweiser, or thanks to Budweiser, back with us again and all our sponsors here on FSN. There's a heads-up play by Rincon because many times you'll see a pitcher just give up on that play, too. Not even uh, motion towards first base, but... You're exactly right. You know, they've done it about a thousand times now in the last two weeks, so... He was used to it. I think the Cardinals have been pleasantly surprised with the way that Rincon has come in and pitched. I mean, he has looked as sharp as anybody out of their bullpen, and yet he was late getting here, only spent... About 48 hours with the club was off to the World Baseball Classic where he was uh, very good for Team Mexico and has come back and pitched well. Uh, you know, he, he was uh, not Tony Russo's favorite during that time he had the visa problems, but when Dave Duncan saw him throw on the side, they said, okay, obviously he's been throwing, and they weren't as concerned. And really for a relief pitcher that's kind of a specialist, you got plenty of time to, to get yourself in good shape. Ground ball hit to first. They're going to try to turn two. Miles can really get down the line, and uh, he is safe over there first. So first and third. And the batter will be Gall. It's not as pretty to see the 3-6. And you're trying to time the pitcher covering. You know, if it's a left-handed throwing first baseman, you'd probably get the ball that split second quicker to, to second base, and it would have been a double play. Gall out to deep left field. Pretty well hit. Is it going to stay fair? It's down the line, and it is gone. It's a home run for John Gall. A pinch hit shot. A three-run shot here in the bottom of the eighth to make it 11-2 to Cardinals. John Gall is fighting for one of those five leftover spots and he, how he's going to make it is that power coming off the bench stanford university two-time cardinal minor league player of the year ball drifting inside clears his hips drops the head and he goes off the foul pole for a home run three run home run 11 two cardinals dabak with hit number 11 for St. Louis, and he's two for two with the devil. You see Brian Dobbach, as we said, because he only, you know, basically a one position player. It's gonna be tough for him to make this club, but he is opening the eyes of a lot of these scouts here, so if he doesn't make this team, he's gonna, he's gonna find a job someplace. But John Gull, and John has basically said that given the choice of sitting on the bench, as a pinch hitter or playing every day in minor leagues, I'll take the bench job. Here's Davey Cruz, who said that it's taken him a while to get his legs underneath him and just get back into game shape. Slow start here in spring training. Lines it to foul and out of play, a souvenir near the Braves bullpen. Davey Cruz, a guy that historically has just killed the Cardinals, whether it was with San Francisco, Remember Detroit came through with the interleague play and he had something like five or six doubles in a three game series. He's always been a pretty good offensive player, but people question now is his range really limited. The foot speed is down. Defensively, is he going to help you enough? He's got a little pop you saw there with those 70 home runs in his career. to the count on Davy Cruz. Mm -hmm. 
That's going to drop for a base hit. Dahlbach will move to second. Still only one out. And brings in Chris Duncan, who's one for four in the afternoon with an RBI double. Tom Pratt out to talk to his young pitcher as you see it kind of ball backing up a little bit, just hanging up in the inside part of the plate. Major League hitters aren't going to miss it. Maybe at the college ranks they did, but not here. Chris Duncan picked up the RBI double as he hit it to the opposite way. Drove in two. He struck out three times, but now on this is spring training, 11 RBIs. He had a home run at the Braves home park in Orlando that they said only Chipper Jones has hit ones as far. And then the next day, he hit a, a 2 0 pitch off a home run from Randy Johnson. Cardinals have out hit Atlanta 12 4 and lead it 11 2. Popped up left side and that'll find the seats here at Roger Dean Stadium. As the rain stayed away. Runs are raining in Girard. Cannot be easy to be in this organization if you're Chris Duncan and your dad is the pitching coach. And there's some extra pressure with that because of the way it's perceived by teammates. Well, and, and there were times, I know, talking with his mother, that she really wished he wasn't not in the organization. He has an older brother that's in the Yankees organization, Shelley. Duncan rips it down the right field line, foul. I think Shelley hit 26 home runs at double-A. Chris hit 23 at triple-A. Big, strapping young kids, but uh, he's only 24 years of age. Decided to make the jump from high school to professional baseball. Did not go to college. Fights this one off, but uh, hits it to the shortstop, Pena, for the uh, second out. And Spezio will be the hitter with two down. I enjoyed your conversation with uh, Scott Spezio. You get the feeling that if he sticks around, he's going to be one of the favorites, too. You know, likable guy, talkative, understands the history of the what franchise. What do you think? You think I ought to die at red? No. No. Not, I, I've got a chance to do it now that you said no. Then go right ahead. <laughs> I'll donate money to that charity of uh, your choice. Why not pick up some of the tattoos he's got, too? Just jump, <laughs> jump right into it, Al. <laughs> I think we're going a little too far. <laughs> one ball, one strike. With two outs and two runners on. Oh. Have you thought about any piercings? Um, yeah, I thought about not doing it. Okay. <laughs> Long and hard. All outside. Three and one. We we're talking about Al the fact that a strength of the Cardinals will be, it looks to be their bullpen. But uh, again, and a lot of people point to this, a weakness for Atlanta, their bullpen. As Dan Kolb has moved on to Milwaukee, as this one has popped up. Cal Farnsworth went to the Yankees, and the catch is made by the third baseman, the Cardinal Strand, too. And we head to the ninth. It's spring training here in Jupiter, all St. Louis this afternoon with you. In Jupiter, Florida, Roger Dean Stadium, 11-2 Cardinals, and Brad Thompson in relief of Nelson, Rincon, Hancock, and Ponson. Pretty good pitching effort this afternoon, Al. Absolutely. This pitching staff currently ranked third in the National League, but that ERA just keeps on going down. Here's David Kelton. Thompson had a solid season last year for the Cardinals, but yet he seems to be battling for the job, too. I was saying this before, Al, when you were downstairs. I mean, the Cardinals would love to find, you know, the next Al Reyes or a Kiko right. Calero, a guy that can step in in the sixth, seventh, eighth and get key outs. Maybe it's Thompson. Ground ball hit to short. 
Luna across the diamond to Dabak, and there's one away. And one thing we saw in Brad Thompson, he's fearless out there, may not have the best stuff, but he throws strikes, and he gets a lot of ground balls. I was impressed with Hancock. Uh, Nelson had one of his better outings, but uh, Brad, you know, I'm based on what he did last year, he's got to lose a job for me. But when we talk about the bullpen, this is the first time in three years you can talk about Isringhausen being healthy. Yep. And he is throwing outstanding. Cardinals a little bit concerned with uh, Braden Looper. Not with velocity, though. He's been in the mid-90s consistently. It's just been on his location. Well, I saw him pitch the other day, and it probably was the best velocity. And you can see everything's there. But he's coming off the shoulder surgery. I think he's being able to finish off his pitches. And I think the role as a setup man is perfect for him. And the tag is applied by Daubach for the second out. Throw up the line by Spezio. And you were talking about coming back from that surgery that he had a cleanup surgery for Looper. And Dave Duncan was saying it was more a question of trying to find the right arm slot for him. And that's been one of the reasons that he can't uh, quite get the location down. Yeah, because, you know, it's, it's kind of like... It hurt, but he was able to find a slot where it didn't hurt as much. And he could, he could go out there and compete. And he had 28 saves for the Mets. But now it's cleaned up. He doesn't have to worry about that, but you kind of break some of your bad habits. This is a guy that uh, the Braves are high on. Telemachia, who is from the Atlanta area. And they say he has got a bat like a Jeff Brancourt, but he's a catcher. They've already got McCann there. Or rather, he's from this area. Excuse me, Jupiter. He has been a guy that uh, so far has proven that he can be an offensive threat, but they're going to have to find a position for him because catcher is going to be occupied by McCann. And they really think that maybe down the road he'll blossom into the first base, first baseman, but he was just at A-ball last year. He hit 314, 19 home runs, 81 RBIs. But Bobby Cox in the Atlanta Braves farm system, a lot of catchers and shortstops. Three and one the count is Brad Thompson trying to get the final out. Cardinals lead it 11-2 on a 12-hit attack. And good pitching this afternoon. Started with Sidney Ponson going five innings. And a ground ball hit to the right side. Thompson covering it first, and the Cardinals win it 11-2. St. Louis ups their record at 10-7-1. Atlanta now 6-13 during spring training. Two hours and 20 minutes is Tony La Russa and Bobby Cox will shake hands behind home plate. And again, the pitching is what stood out today. Well, they only allow four hits to a very good Atlanta club and two runs, and one of those was unearned. So this pitching staff is starting to really round into shape in the offense. You can't say enough about it, too, today. 12 hits, 11 runs. Cardinals win it. 11 to 2. Back to wrap it up in a moment. Roger Dean Stadium, Averboski, Dan McLaughlin, 11 12 and 1 St. Louis. Two 4-0 for the Braves, and uh, like you said, Al, good pitching, good hitting, and a good win for St. Louis. Well, any win's a win, but you get you get good habits, good hard practice, and you learn from it, and you learn how to win in, during the regular season. Excellent job down there in the dugout as well, Al. Mid-season form you are in. Our final score, 11-2 St. Louis. Our next TV game is Saturday at noon. J.D. Drew and the Dodgers are in town. Cardinal Baseball, the production of Bud Sports and an exclusive presentation of FSN Midwest. Coming up next, Poker Superstars for Al Roboski and our Bud Sports crew. I'm Dan McLaughlin, and so long from Jupiter.